The A380 Neo and A380 Plus represent two separate endeavours by one, the European plane maker Airbus and Emirates, which had very different promises but the same outcome. But before diving into this, the A380 800 launched following a study known as the A3XX, aimed to redefine how passenger flights were operated, all this thanks to its sheer scale and capabilities. However, despite initial interest and some success, the plane's struggled to reach the heights that many may have envisaged at the time of the program's launch. Production of the 380 would cease in 2021 after failed sales attempts, with no true successor being offered. However, two variants proposed by Airbus or airlines could have definitely extended the life, but didn't. So what are these two planes, but more importantly, what were they proposed to do and were there any similarities and or differences? Lastly, why didn't they launch? Well, the A380neo, short for of course new engine option, was not an Airbus driven initiative, but rather an idea that was strongly championed by Emirates, the largest operator of the Dash 800 model. This approach was ultimately unique, as the airline tried to find ways to replace its A380-800s in an efficient manner. Emirates saw potential in a re-engined version of the 380. Through their proposals, they believed there would be substantial cost advantages of moving ahead with such an endeavour, but they did really lack a firm degree of support. The A380neo, for looking at what it would have actually brought to the table, would have been new engines that are likely more efficient, alongside that aerodynamic enhancements and trying to find a way to reduce the overall weight. Such upgrades would align an A380neo seemingly with many other programs that have received a new engine option alternative, meaning also for Airbus that Emirates believe they wouldn't need to break the bank to build a successor. However, the A380neo lacked firm details, for it was not a plane that Airbus had proposed, but rather it was strictly Emirates. Moreover, the aircraft didn't have backing from any other customer, making it hard for it to progress. Unlike the A380 Plus, which I will get into, Airbus also never fully endorsed or committed to a new engine option, and there was little to no demand for such an endeavour from anyone except the largest customer of the initial variant. The A380 Plus, however, stands out different... The A380 Plus, however, stands out differently from the A380neo, who actually put forward the concept. The Plus was a formal initiative unveiled by Airbus at the 2017 Paris Air Show. The aircraft was proposed to be a modest upgrade rather than a full transformative redesign. The A380 Plus aimed to improve the economic viability of the A380-800 by introducing relatively straightforward enhancements, but nonetheless enhancements, period. Airbus knew there were limitations in the initial model that may have made it unattractive for some, and they hoped to change this. It is also worth acknowledging that during this point of the 2010s, Airbus were really attempting to push the A380 for one last time you could consider. We know that not many customers were interested, and really production was going to end sooner rather than later unless Airbus could attract new customers or find a means to elevate the program. Therefore, the A380 Plus certainly came at a time where it could be perceived it was trying to do anything that would hopefully stick the landing. Key features of the Plus included new winglets. Airbus claimed this would deliver a 4% reduction in fuel burn, and we'd also saw structural refinements to accommodate a higher maximum takeoff weight. The increase in this would allow the aircraft to carry more passengers or load while flying longer distances. Airbus also proposed further changes that would be possible for customers for cabin layout means, and this would of course lead to further optimization. The A380 Plus also required less investment than the A380neo, making it a more feasible option. However, the metrics did not stack up for Emirates. While the A380neo and A380 Plus aim to rejuvenate the program, their approaches certainly differed, with one driven by the manufacturer and one driven by the airline. The A380neo represented a vision of re-engineering and a technological overhaul, which could have subsequently improved fuel efficiency and operating costs, but would have come at quite a cost, and required substantial investment away from just the plane maker. Simply put, if you're looking at just the new engines 
that would be required. Airbus would need to coordinate with engine manufacturers for them to put forward something that they would like to put on the aircraft. And this is a lot easier said than done when most companies were trying to innovate and move away from quad-engined planes. In contrast, the A380 Plus focused on more incremental improvements that were to be less costly but time-consuming to implement, which the plane maker felt may have offered carriers an important solution to their concerns that had been outlined with the Dash 800 model in the past. Another notable difference lay in the market backing. Emirates' vocal support for the A380neo, even though they were the ones to actually put forward the endeavour, was a contrast to the A380+, Plus, which attracted little to no firm interest at all and basically disappeared from the industry in the same week that it was announced. It is often why some people may completely forget it was even proposed, and if you just so happen to be new to the aviation industry in the last few years and are catching up on all the bits of information that have occurred in the last half century and definitely in the last decade, you'd be forgiven if you completely weren't aware of this. Both the A380neo, however, and A380 Plus certainly fell victim to the same overarching challenge, interest in operating such a massive quad-engined aircraft. By the time these concepts did emerge, international airlines had shifted away from large aircraft in favour of more flexible, fuel-efficient twin-engine jets. These newer planes offered a comparable range, but also with far lower operations costs. They were the perfect means to move forward instead of relying on these massive planes. The A380neo in particular suffered purely from Emirates being the sole customer, speaking about this even being a solution. There were no firm specifications or even a strong business case, certainly not on Airbus's front where they putting forward the neo. As a result from the offing, Airbus was reluctant to commit to a project with such a high financial risk. Emirates's support alone, no matter how enthusiastic, could not offset the lack of broader demand, which was certainly evident through the demise of the A380-800 during the latter stages of the 2010s. Meanwhile, the promised 4% fuel efficiency gain on the A380 Plus and additional seating capacity, alongside some more modest improvements, were insufficient to justify many airlines returning back to the program. Ultimately, the A380's inability to attract sustained orders for just the baseline model sealed the fate for both variants, and a successor was deemed not worthwhile. Production for the Dash 800 model would wrap up in 2021, and now the flagship is considered the A350, with several variants having been released or in the works to try and elevate long-haul flying. The A380 would experience a fate that many people predicted, a production life ending far sooner than the plane maker imagined. When in 2019, Emirates adjusted some of its orders, and Airbus knew that the end was coming, saying that the final delivery would occur two years later. The decision marked an end of an era for ultra-large aircraft such as this one, and certainly highlighted the industry's shift towards greater efficiency. The A380neo and A380 Plus that I have been discussing with you today are simply what-ifs, and they maybe could have had a different outcome had they been discussed earlier, but neither were clearly meant to be. However, they will continue to offer glimpses into what could have been and equally showcase the initial base model's failures that meant moving ahead with a successor wouldn't work. You could perceive it as a failure on the part of the model or simply an evolution of what airlines required. I'd love to hear your take down below in the comments on these two prospective aircraft types, very differing backgrounds, support, and obviously though having the same outcome. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in a couple of days for your latest industry analysis.